Uh, thank you so, so much for being here. Um, our title of our presentation today was, uh, is Make More and Serve More in 2024. Um, and that has a pretty nice ring to it, right? Because 2023 was a little bit of a tough year for some of us in the industry. Uh, we saw some mortgage professionals maybe uh, drop out of the market. We saw some other professionals maybe get second jobs. And, you know, we don't ever like to see that. But obviously, there's a huge shift in what went on in the world uh, as far as real estate. And uh, obviously, the numbers dropped uh, pretty significantly. Um, but we are here to look forward, and I want to thank you guys all for taking the time out of your busy days to come, to learn, to hopefully implement the new strategies, and honestly, maybe open up, the goal is opening up doors to new referral sources um, and trying to think outside the box. Uh, one of my favorite artists made a comment a few weeks ago, which is the windshield is bigger than the rear view mirror for a reason. Right, and I like that resonates with me. We need to look forward and not look back because there's so much more ahead of us. So, um, <clears throat> uh, before I continue on any further, I just want to thank every one of our teammates here, a bunch of them standing in the back of the room. My wife, who really shouldered 100% uh, of this, and actually, of course, the folks in my team that are they're sitting down as well. Um, so let's go to a little bit of uh, forecast for 2024. We're referring this to the year of the fox. And I think this will resonate with you and feel free to share it and use it. Um, why? It's an estimate that there will be 5 million existing home sales in 2024. And the great news is that's going to be up 13.5% in 2023. Right? So more listings, more deals, more helping customers. Um, it's estimated here in Connecticut that we're going to see roughly 5% home price appreciation, which I think is awesome. Um, obviously, that number moves as the market changes, but that's the estimate, and it's been the estimate for months now. I've been tracking it. And then the big one is 30-year fix will likely get into the fives at some point this year. If it's December of 2024, don't kill me, but <laughs> this year, right? But the reason why I think that's an important one is because... I don't know about you, but sellers are sitting because they don't want to go from three to six, right? Or three to seven, or three to eight, whatever the number is. You know, the, the sentiment is that they're going to feel better at five. And there's a lot of people out there, you guys know this, I'm telling you what you already know, but there's a lot of people out there that are comfortable in their current house and they know their expenses and they don't really want to go to a new house and with unknown expenses and higher interest rates, right? So let's hope that unlocks some of the... Um, the sellers out there. A few quick things before we get to the, the, the uh, meat of the presentation. Cross Country Mortgage is now the third largest lender in the US. When I came to Cross Country in 2017, we were doing about three and a half to $5 billion in production. Last year, we did about 36 billion. Why do I tell you that? We close right now, on average, one out of every 44 US homes. That's a staggering, okay? So you're working with a really solid, top-notch group of professionals here. Quick thing on pre-approvals. This is a big one, especially for your buyers out there that don't want to get a hard inquiry. We do soft credit pulls on 90% of the transactions that we pre-approve. There's a very small amount that we don't. Um, so they can shop, get a pre-approval, and have no impact on their credit score. That is huge. Uh, buy and shop refi later. Because we know people are refinancing in the next two years with rates coming down, we are giving them a $1,500 credit when they come back to us. They have to purchase with us. When they come back to us, this is a true credit. This is not being built into the interest rate. Uh, at the branch level, we're covering part of it, and at the corporate level, they're covering about nine. Okay. Uh, fast track credit approvals. You guys have heard of these. These are the pre underwritten TVDs for consumers. These will help keep these in mind, utilize them. It also can provide for a quicker closing. Um, and then I'm going to talk about our home buyer education class in a second. Pete, if you go to the next slide. All right, the fast track credit approval. Does anyone here know what the fast track approval is? Yes, it is a mortgage commitment subject to appraisal, title, homeowner's insurance. What's the fourth thing, folks? Appraisal, title, insurance, property. <laughs> no, contract. Thank you. Yeah, contract. Um, but it's a lot better than a pre approval, and it's obviously better than a pre approval qualification. It costs zero dollars. The customer just has to do a little bit more work, i.e., signing one, two, or three more. Not that big of a deal. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're dealing with your consumers. That'll help get offers accepted, close more quickly and more easily. I would want to plug that. Next slide, Pete. All right, home buyer education class. We offer a home buyer education class second Tuesday of every month religiously. Second Tuesday of every month. 
consumer comes on, does the course, they get a certificate from us at cross country, they get a small credit towards their clothing cost of $250. They just have to come on the course. Uh, we cover budgeting, we cover credit, we cover home ownership benefit, a lot of great things. We've had some, some realtors who have sent the invites to the class to pass leads that they've had, and it's actually unlocked a few buyers and turned them into real leads. So if you want to promote it, please reach out to us. Honestly, we don't really even care if they end up working with us if we want them to, because we're hosting it for one, we host it for all, okay? And it's on Zoom, so people don't have to worry about showing up. See? All right, so let's go into our presentation. <coughs> and uh, I saw this the other day, a year from now, you, you may wish you started today. And the reason why I think this is fitting is because of the portfolio of products that we have. Because of, you know, Pete here who knows this product inside and out, and it's actually our sales director for the entire company who happens to live in Massachusetts, which is great. It's nice and local and close. Um, so I'm going to tell you a quick story. We're closing a loan on Tuesday for a consumer that thought, client that thought she could not buy a house. She talked to other mortgage folks. folks. She had a sale of a business and a divorce and a this and a that about five years ago. She was told, no, no, no. Realtor was going to put her into a rental. The rental commission for realtor was going to be $25 on the box. The client didn't want to rent, but thought she had to rent. They gave it one more hail and Mary and came to us. I called Pete, went through the deal, about a million dollar purchase, $200,000 down, went through the deal. Pete helped me structure it. They're closing on Tuesday. I talked to her yesterday. She is thrilled. And how do you think the realtor is going to make $2,500 in the box? <laughs> Pretty damn good, right? <laughs> so this product set really will help you guys a ton. And before I introduce Pete, I want to tell you one of the things we're going to talk about is financial planners and CPAs. Financial planners and CPAs, their book of business turns over from a real estate perspective to the tune of 10% a year. So if a realtor has 100 clients, the average realtor, uh, sorry, the financial planner has 100 clients, and the average financial planner has between 50 and 150 clients in the U.S., 100 clients, 10% is 10 real estate agents. So financial planners can be a source of roughly 10% of their book of business. So financial planners and CPAs are great targets. That's where I'm going. So if you don't have real estate relationships, uh, financial planner relationships and CPA relationships, I, I plan on doing that. I think you need to walk out of here. And one of them could be your own. Your own financial planner, your own accountant. You just have to ask. So I'm going to turn it over to Pete. Who is our sales director in the non-QM space, which is our portfolio. Um, we call it our portfolio products because of the amount of exceptions that we do and the great lending that we do. On the street, you would know it as non-QM, but Pete, thank you for your help. And Sounds uh, good. Take it away, though. All right. Thanks, Jen. Appreciate it. All right. So my goal here today is to make sure that we're opening doors for you. This isn't just about guidelines. This isn't just about um, you know, helping you create business. This is really thinking outside the box in a time where there might not be as many listings or there might not be as many opportunities that you think can be done. When a client comes to you, I mean, Jay just said something that resonated with me yesterday when I was doing one of these in Massachusetts that you know, basically you need to think about all the portfolio options and what's happened in the marketplace. We saw uh, First Republic, uh, Silicon Savings, uh, Federal, uh, Silicon Valley Bank go down. And it was really, those were true giant portfolio banks that basically couldn't meet the compliance of having their deposits, right? Meet their mortgage needs, right? It's basically, there's federal laws about that. So what's happened since then is there been a giant tightening at local banks. Okay, so we've really tried to solve this problem for the last five years behind the scenes. We've been building this product here at Cross Country Mortgage. Um, as uh, Jay went through, we're one of the top three lenders. We practically offer every product in the marketplace. I don't really know of anything that we don't have. But with this product set, we're going to talk today. It's about opening more doors and opportunities for you. Okay, because a lot of the time we'll hear. Oh, my client went to Wells Fargo. My client went to Chase. He went to M&T. He went to all these different banks and they said no. The thing we want you to think about here across country is let us take a look. We have uh, probably the most sophisticated group of people that I know in the mortgage business that haven't had like legacies of 10, 20, 30 years in the business, 
but more or less are innovative young professionals that are bringing like the most crazy software to the table that we could ever ask for as, you know, originators. So think about it that way. Um, you know, all the loan officers here can answer questions as well as I can after this. So if you have anything you want to answer, we do do a Q&A at the end. But, you know, when we're talking about different success stories out in the marketplace, um, you know, we're talking about things that we could build off of um, when it comes to non-QM. So non-QM in general, okay, is a non-qualified mortgage, meaning a mortgage that is outside of the box, a portfolio mortgage. You're going to hear a lot of loan officers go out there and talk about non-QM uh, simply because there's not as much margin compression, meaning people with this type of product aren't always shopping rates to the 10th degree because this could be their last chance, right? But where we control everything, most of our competition out in the marketplace that's offering this type of product, they do it via broker, which is handing a loan package over to another lender to have them make a decision where there's no control. Here, we're the direct lender. We securitize these mortgages in-house, and we actually service a lot of them as well. So what is non-QM? Well, basically, there's a bunch of different client types that are going to fall into this bucket. We've got self-employed borrowers, um, wealthy clients, okay? So like almost like a private wealth product where we're dealing with assets only. Real estate investors, which is one of the hottest things we're going to talk about today, that, you know, for the most part, I think I have like over 700 realtors that follow me on social media. I don't see any of them except for a few, maybe two, that are marketing investors at all. So something you might want to think about that we're going to talk about today. Deal fallout from other banks, whether you're a manager of a real estate office, a team leader, or just a real estate agent in office, you hear something going down, talk to one of your cross-country loan officers. There's a tremendous amount of deals that flow over to our team at the end of every month. I started to see it pick up yesterday into next week. It will continue that way. The greatest thing about this is, again, we're the decision maker, so we can act quickly for you, okay? So we're going to go into all these different types of clients, foreign national clients, so people relocating here to live. So people that might be a doctor, pharmaceutical business, uh, corporate company that working down in Stanford, um, New York City. Um, we're seeing a lot of that start to open up. A lot of Europeans are moving here right now. Um, simply put, COVID's kind of passed and we're getting back to normal, okay? Uh, but foreign nationals in general that actually don't live or work here, where people thought they had to pay cash, right? Maybe they travel in for business in a New York City, but don't want to stay in New York City and want to stay in Westport and have a home in the water, right? A lot of people think. So we're going to open your eyes today about cash, how to utilize it to win the deal, but also how to think about maybe they shouldn't use all their cash so we can have them buy additional properties, right? So non-QM at Cross Country, we started off with a correspondent relationship um, with a couple different entities about five years ago. As of last year, the product line has grown to one of the largest in the country. We're the number one retailer in the country when it comes to this portfolio product. Um, the key differentiator between us and let's say a guaranteed rate or your local broker trying to do this product is 35% of all of our closed volume doesn't meet the guidelines. It's exception. So it's a true portfolio product. So if your FICO was off, your credit score was off a couple of points, and you needed a 700 to go to that $2 million loan, if you had a 697 and you had some compensating factors, most likely we'd approve it, okay? But loan to value, creative income, these are all things we're going to discuss today. But I'd say the hardest thing that we have to understand for you as, you know, as a realtor is that we understand the relationship. We understand the frustration when you can't get an answer as a real estate agent and the client's banging down your door. I need that answer. I need that answer. Um, today, you're going to learn more about how you can work with us with some of these programs. That's so you understand a better working of how these products work and what's going on in the industry, specifically with condoms. So growth, this product line, 400% year over year. There's no other product line in the industry that has that type of growth. Everything's down 
mostly because there's not enough listings in the marketplace. Hopefully we have a product we're gonna to discuss today too that will help you with that. So let's talk about self-employed borrowers. So getting hyper-local with this type of product, Jay mentioned finding a tax uh, CPA, finding a financial advisor. You probably have one of each that you're already working with. Talk to them, get them, in your, get them on your side. As Jay said, 10% of their business will sell a home in a year, okay? 10% of their business. But bank statement loans, which we're gonna discuss, are the number one non-QM program for self-employed borrowers in the United States. Simply put, since COVID, more people aren't going into the office. More people are deciding, hmm, maybe I'll just go on my wife or my husband's benefits and I don't need to travel into New York City. I'll just sit down here on Fairfield Beach in my beach chair and you know, plug away on my computer. Um, it's projected that the number over the next five years is you know, almost double. So we're looking at 15 million self-employed borrowers right now um, and 38 million by 2028. So the opportunity is there for you if you recognize it. I have seen realtors literally sprint away from someone that like, oh, I'm self-employed. Like, oh, it's gonna be a tough mortgage. I've never understood, you know, as a manager, branch manager, division president, all the different things I've been, why loan officers can't nail this down. At Cross Country, we have technology. So right off the bat, you give one of the loan officers a deal. Within hours, we have answers on their tax returns with technology, with software. You plug it in, it runs it, it gives you a yes or no. It's pretty great. Um, then if that doesn't work and we know, okay, I'm doing a loan for my favorite realtor and he or she made $200,000 last year, but they wrote off $199,999. I did a ton of marketing, you know, put on so many miles, put up, you know, put on so many miles on that car. Um, we see it, we understand it. This is why we have, um, you know, the tax laws we have. So people that are self-employed can start a business, um, write off a lot and, you know, work towards not having to pay that huge self-employed tax. Um, so what we're looking at is we have options. And when other people say no, simply we have options to quickly decipher what we can do for them. So really want to understand who these people are. So when you're going around, we're going to talk about financial planners first. If you have a financial planner, just so you know, with all these product lines, you can join one of these loan officers, a uh, total expert. They can send you a link to become a partner where, where you will be dual branded on any item that we send out to that client. Birthday, loan anniversary. Um, they do a semi-annual checkup on the house to see what they're doing, okay? I'd say, you know, one of the best testimonials I've ever had that in my life is I love the fact that um, when we call people, I'm like, hey, you're looking for a second home. We're actually looking for a house up on Cape Cod. I'm like, great. I'm like, do you have a real? They're like, no. I'm like, all right. Um, let me have the realtor give you a call. And what I'll, we'll do is we'll call the realtor that did the loan and you can refer them and make the, you know, referral commission. That's like the best call you're ever going to get, right? So understanding the financial planner is the same way. They're talking to people about these moves, about the things that they're going to do. So with this program, we call it the financial planner gold because simply financial planners don't want to hear these words. I need to withdraw money out of my account to buy a house cash. I've talked to my local mortgage person. It doesn't work. I don't have a job. I'm retired. Um, I sold my business, right? I just sold my house. Um, I'm not a retirement age. I have no social security. I have no income. So this income's, I mean, this income calculation is really simple. We take the total amount of assets someone has, checking, savings, investments, 401k, IRA, crypto, liquidated crypto. Um, and we take uh, estates, trusts, uh, paper bonds we just did the other day. They had to cash them in so we could see what they actually were. But if they have 125% of their mortgage debt from right now and the mortgage we're about to write in the bank post-close, 
we're done. There's no income in the file. This is a no ratio loan. There's no income driven from the file other than the fact that we verified that we have 125% of their total mortgage debt in a state that could be liquidated. So someone that sold a company, they don't have a job now, they just sold their company. Someone that just retired. So I'm gonna give you a success story on this. I marketed a financial planner last summer with a real estate agent when I brought them this program. She introduced me, um, I got a call in the middle of the summer and I was like, hey, who's this? He's like, oh, you know, this is this is John. I'm, I'm actually down in Newport, I'm on vacation. But my buddy just flew in from Lake Tahoe and he used to live in Boston and we're down here with our families, enjoying everything. And he just retired and he's about to withdraw 1 million of the 4 million he has with me at Fidelity. And I'm like, oh, all right. He's like, what was that program again? Sure. So all I did was keep top of mind with him, with the agent. He actually called the agent first to get my info again, because he was on vacation. And this guy was ready to make an offer. And the great thing was he had the cash. So we made a cash offer on that property. I said, what's he got for a mortgage out in California? 500 grand. What do you want him to withdraw? Let's say 50%. This is a million dollar condo in downtown Newport, Rhode Island. So we did a $500,000 mortgage there too. So you had a million dollars. He's taken out 500,000. So now I have three, five, okay? Because he wasn't of retirement age and he had basically just retired from PayPal, um, I could use 70% of his total retirement that he had in Fidelity. 70% of 3.5 is a lot more than 125% of a million or 1,250,000 in the bank. We're done. Six months bank statements, we closed in three weeks. I was ecstatic. Interest only payment. Every one of these deals, folks, we are trying to find a way to set the client up for a refi. Okay. Everything we're going to talk about today, it could be short term, it could be long term, but these are better than hard money, which run, you know, 12, 13, 14%, depending on who you're working with. So no income, no job, but we're using their assets to qualify. Okay. So there's a lot of money down here in Southern Connecticut. So you have clients that are going to come to you or people that think they can't buy, okay? Especially people that are downsizing. The market's hot. You want listings. People want to move. They don't know where to go. They don't know if they can get a mortgage or not, okay? We're approved in all 50 states in this room, so we can help anybody out. And we have branches in other states as well where we can get referrals for you if you don't have a realtor in that area that you can make that percentage as well. So make sure you talk to your loan officer. So that's the asset qualifier loan or wealth program. So another one, we're talking about accountants. You need to get hyper-local. If you work here in Fairfield, Westport, Greenwich, Southport, Hartford on the other side, wherever you're from, you need to get hyper-local of where your clients are located, okay? Really important. If you've got a bunch of clients in Westport, you should probably have a tax person there and a financial advisor. Okay. Greenwich, same thing. The important thing is they're probably one in the community that people know. And then also you can get referrals, right? Because this program right here, who's the first person someone calls when their tax returns don't work out? The tax preparer, right? So the tax preparer, this program is all about, we'll use 12 or 24 months bank statements, the business's deposits coming in to qualify them. So the simple way I explain this is we have three different ways to kind of show how we apply an expense factor to someone's business bank statements. So we know right off the bat, we put our stuff in through our software. There is no way this tax return will work. There is absolutely no way. We look at the asset qualifier. It's only six month statements, real easy, real quick. No uh, debt to income ratio form. With this one, we're forming a debt to income ratio. But what we're doing is we're taking the gross receipts. So we had a client with a pizza shop or a restaurant. Said, how much, what do you do for you know a, a daily, what's your monthly deposits? About 30,000, we do about $1,000 a day, a small restaurant. <clears throat> Okay, so 30,000 times 12 months, so about 360,000 gross. Yes. I said, okay. So our first method of qualifying someone would be really simple. 
We slice that in half and we qualify on 180,000. So we apply a 50% expense factor. 180,000 divided by 12, 15K a month. I'm looking at it, $350,000 mortgage, easy. Easy, easy, easy. Again, as a self-employed borrower, those expenses could be 90%. They could be 100%, depending on where the business is or what they've done. Specifically coming out of COVID, self-employed borrowers took a giant hit there. There was a lot of loans. There was a lot of things that made tax returns look very good for them. Okay, we're still looking at 24 months for the majority, especially in the jumbo market. You need 24 months tax returns or two years tax returns. We're still going back into, you know, 2021 because 2023 for most people that are savvy business people don't file their tax returns until October of 2024. So we're still still in the heap of things with 2021. So this is why this program works. The second method that we would use to qualify someone would be we'd have them print out a profit and loss, have a CPA sign it. I affirm these costs. Sounds good. Comes close to what the uh, uh, deposits are. They somewhat match. We'll use that number, which is usually better than the 50% method. And then the last method is we even a CPA. These clients have great CPAs, and this is why you need to be able to refer someone. Um, the CPA writes the expense. The expense factor for this restaurant was 10%. We apply that, we give them the number, and we're off and running. But these are real programs, real solutions that help out a ton of people. <clears throat> and these rates, low sevens, high sixes yesterday. Like really, really affordable. But again, as all the loan officers can attest, we are always seeking a way, because we're not a bank, we're a mortgage company, to get that client in the best situation again in a year, right? So to get them into a refinance. That's why our owner came up with that buy now, refi later, because he knows that people are going to refinance and we want these clients for life with you. Okay, 1099 program. This is a quick one. Most of you were 1099 or you flow to an LLC or S Corp or, but if your 1099 was flown to an S Corp that you're the, you're the single owner or an LLC, the 1099 only program is we'll take 90% of your 2023 1099 and qualify off that. So a 10% expense factor. You gotta prove that you're still in the business, that you have some business going still, where we're so close to last year and those 1099s are just printing right now and coming out to you, um, we would probably just affirm that you're still a, a realtor, right? But a really simple solution. Great story on this one. At a wedding singer, 42 1099s. My processor loved me with that one. Okay, I mean, four, 42 1099s, good wedding singer, I guess. He made about $400,000, right? I mean, he was, these were like 10,000, 10,000 plus a gig um, that he was making. So, you know, that was the type of deal. He wrote off everything, every single little thing to, down to the guitar pick, guitar strings, drumsticks, everything you could think of. He literally made like $5. I'm like, listen, I'm like, is this, is this real? And he's like, I can't believe you're getting me alone. I've been to 10, 10 people. Right. But the thing is we make everybody look great when we can execute. All right, that's the key. Um, but helping these folks that are, you know, really grinding in today's, like we find a lot 1099s like yourself, you guys are grinding. You're trying to work as hard as you can um, when there's not a lot of, you know, inventory, right? Everyone's fighting for the same piece. This is why these programs are so important. No one's focused on them. No one's focused on the people that need the help. Not a lot of real estate agents are going out and forming relationships with other referral partners. It is so key if you can develop these things because it works. Knowledge, as I always say, is power. And having the knowledge of these programs, just simply putting it on a, you know, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, that if you're having trouble qualifying, we, you work with a you know, great mortgage company that can help you out. Um, you know, doing seminars, um, giant thing um, for the self-employed because this is the last part of it local chambers of commerce 
um, BNIs, young professional groups, Freemasons. Um, there are so many different self-employed organizations you can be a part of or join your realtor group. But when you overhear it and you, you know there's a problem going down in the office, just know that one of the loan officers in this room most likely can have an answer, okay? Just understand, we're not doing credit scores in the 500s. This is not subprime, okay? We are gonna find a way, but we're gonna do it ethically, and we're also gonna do it risk averse, okay? These are 10, this program, those three, pro, all 10% down, okay? We don't do eight, we don't do five. It's 10% down right now, okay? That bank statement program as well for anyone that um, has a lot of clients in the DACA ITIN area, uh, we do the, the bank statement program with 20% down for DACA and ITIN clients, okay? Ton of it. Okay, investment properties. So I love this story simply put because again, a lot of agents aren't focused on investors. Right now, there are so many housing units out there that investors own where renters are filling. And right now, we are at one of the lowest vacancy rates ever. And I told a story yesterday that, you know, someone built these new apartments in the town I live in, in back of the grocery store. And I was like, oh, I know a couple friends that were getting divorced that are now living in back of the grocery store. And he's like, oh, you got to come by and check it out. I'm like, I'm like, how's that place? He's like, well... It's $4,400 a month. And I'm like, are you kidding me to live in the back of the grocery store? And he said, yeah. And he's like, it's the closest place I could find within 30 miles of something new that had a gym and that type of stuff. And I said, oh, okay. And he said, 4,400 is a deal for a two bedroom. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So rents have recovered. Rents have recovered. Short-term rentals are also a huge play right now in the marketplace, okay? There is a um, podcast and website called biggerpockets.com. Little did you know that there are meetups right here all over Southern Connecticut. I looked last night, there was like 50. And this is probably people in some of these rows coming in with a bottle of wine, some beer, maybe some water, and they're going, they're meeting up. Someone brings a pizza, someone brings a salad, sandwiches, cheese, whatever. And they sit in a group and they talk about investment buys. The craziest thing is, is that I've been to about 15, 20 of these all over Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Vermont, um, just because those were interested areas where I was looking to invest. Zero realtors at these events. So what I started doing was bringing my realtor to these events one agent, 15 deals last year. Another agent, 22 deals last year. By just being the person that gave information, intelligent information. Looking up homes is so easy for everyone right now. And they think it's so easy to buy a house, right? I can do it on myself. I can do it on my own. Um, you know, we've got Zillow. You've got VRBO to search short-term rentals. But they don't have the data or the prowess or the experience to understand how to actually execute on a deal, especially first time investors. I was shocked that the average age in this group was under 30. So we're coming out of kind of that meme stock boom, right? Where people were signing up for a Robinhood account, dumping money in and day trading during COVID. That's what people did. And by the way, a lot of people made a lot of money. A lot of people lost money, but a lot of people made a lot of money that is just sitting there in these accounts. Under the age of 35 is really the average age I'm seeing at these groups. Some of these kids, I met a, a, a gentleman the other day, 27 years old, owns 10, 10 units already. And I'm like, how is that possible? And he brought me through kind of his evolution of doing things. But this product we're going to talk about helps out a lot. And he used it five years ago. Okay. So DSCR, debt service coverage ratio. This is like a commercial loan that we do in house. We also do it with mixed use, meaning three residential units and maybe a barber shop or a coffee shop or something below. So today when I was <clears throat> at Starbucks, it's the only one in Starbucks in Fairfield, by the way. It's the weirdest thing ever. I've never seen that. Eight in the morning, it's the only one in Starbucks at the Fairfield store. Um, I was like, is it closed? 
Um, but I was sitting in there and I'm working, I'm looking across the street and I see commercial on the first floor and residential up top. That's stuff that we lend on all day long. And this is the way that we do it, right? And I, as my mind started kind of bending as an example for you, because I have so many friends whose kids go to Fairfield University um, and other local colleges. And I was thinking about it, I'm like, oh, Airbnb, 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 like you got college kids everywhere, right? So, and then I was thinking about, um, I used to work at a company uh, locally where we used to have an event at the Fairfield Beach Penfield Pavilion, I think it was called. Um, and I, they used to put us up at the Sea Grape classic spot. Um, but I was like, what are all these college kids doing? I'm like, what is this? There's like a little bar next door. I'm like, this is crazy. And then I found out from my family friend that all the college kids rent the summer rentals from basically the start of college to the spring, then they vacate and then they turn into short-term rentals. And all I could think about was, I hope they clean those places. <laughs> um, but that's what we're talking about here. So you can buy a home with 20% down. And as long as the DSCR, which is the debt service coverage ratio, the rent is at least 75% of the payments, we can do that deal. No, in no other income. This is another no ratio deal. So we're factoring it like a commercial loan where basically the rent is qualifying the loan. Okay, you have to have some reserves, but this is what's sweeping America. This is how people are being taught to buy homes in today's marketplace. So the best story I ever had with this was, um, I had a realtor call me and said, I need your help desperately. This is about two years ago in Boston. I have a retired Boston school teacher pension, it's like 80,000 a year, had a $300,000 mortgage, wouldn't qualify, but just had someone uh, pass away in his family unexpectedly and he inherited a million dollars. And he wanted to buy a three family in Boston that would cash flow. And I said, this is great. So what are the numbers? She's like, oh, he only needs a $200,000 loan. I'm like, okay. I'm like, why are we only buying one property? And I told him about this program, five properties, uh, almost 4.9 million in transactions for the realtor. Okay, guys, guys cash flow like 30 grand a month now. So just so you understand, like when people are looking to pay cash or you know investors that have tried to get a home equity line, this is where this product comes, right? People that own 20, 30, 40, 50 properties, this is what we can do. It's residential, we will do a mix. We do not do commercials. We don't do office buildings and stuff like that. But this product line also works with people that are like myself, like I've said to my wife, I'm like, when we retire, you know, I'm I'm 48. I know you just turned 50. She loved when I told her that. <laughs> um, but we got to start thinking about other homes. We have a house in Vermont, house in Massachusetts. I'm like, we really need that place warm. So I've spoken about this so many times that we've taken the steps now to buy something now where we can put 20 to 25% down and have someone else pay it and short-term rent it for the foreseeable future until we want to move there, right? So you got to get people's minds moving here. And when I show you some of the slides of the ideas for social media, it's key, right? Because we're using technology now, Air DNA. So Air DNA, you're working with a client that wants to do a short-term rental right here in Fairfield. Where are you going to look? MLS? Like MLS has got the going rates for nightly rents. You might look at VRBO. You might look at Airbnb. You might look at some other websites, but AirDNA, your loan officers have the ability to access any address your client would be looking at and give you a report that says, here's what the gross annual rents will be through their rentalizer product that we pay for to help your client understand that their property will probably rent out on average 60% of the time. And this is the average gross income. And by the way, an appraiser, you can give that information to an appraiser as a realtor as well and say, this is what we're aiming for, for the short-term rents. Here's the information, legal information, because it's really hard to find, right? There's no other, MLS doesn't have that information there. 
So air DNA right now for us is guidelines. So we use the market rents, okay? Or the lease, whichever is lower, or we'd use air DNA on short-term rents. You've also got another, uh, if you also wanna know rents and you don't know, rental meter for long-term rentals is pretty conservative, but a great spot to look. Um, I've used Zillow before. It's usually has more data than MLS, unfortunately. Um, of what people are paying for rents because more homeowners will try to rent their property on their own through Zillow or another website than engage a real estate agent. But this product is awesome. First time investors, no problem. Never owned a place, um, no rental experience, not an issue. But hard money lenders, if you don't work with a hard money lender as a realtor, talk to one of the loan officers, get connected. Okay, because we refinance hard money every single day. I went in, I couldn't get in. I was talking to one office before, you know, getting a great deal on a property. It's a bank sale, can't get in one of the bed, one of the apartments of the two family to do the appraisal. Well, we can't do a place without an appraisal. Hard money. Here you go, hard money, we'll refinance you in 30 days. So it's those types of things that again if you try to focus on investors, and I'll show you some cool slides on that. Our full doc program is everything fallout. So think about anything messed up that's going wrong in your office or for loans, but things that you can't think can't, uh, can't get done. Non-warnable condos, huge problem sweeping America right now due to insurance issues. So if you have a non-warnable condo, bring it to the team. As a real estate agent, you want to make sure that you are trying to get, number one, the seller to pay for the condo docs, condo questionnaire, and condo items. So when you're writing that contract, one of my favorite little pieces of verbiage is seller will provide all condo items at seller cost. So you're not cutting a check, we're not cutting a check, and the borrower is not cutting a check. They have the connection, they can get the information, then you're just relying on one person instead of the listing agent saying, oh, call this person. They'll call them, then you're calling another person, another person, another person, and you're trying to track it down. Have the listing agent. Listing agent should have this information, and if you are the listing agent, get the information before you list condos today. There is a major insurance problem going on with condos right now. Simply put, Fannie and Freddie have put a limit of 5% as the deductible on insurance. We see about 50 a day that come to us out of a normal loan because the insurance doesn't meet guidance. So make sure you're doing your due diligence on the condo before you take a listing. Uh, condo tells, so condos with hotel elements. Um, DTI over the limit. So right now at most institutions, 43% is the debt to income ratio. We'll go to 55. We'll go as low as a 620. Usually a 680 on a jumbo loan down here in Fairfield County is your minimum credit score, unless you're putting a ton of money down. Okay. Um, credit events, foreclosure, bankruptcy, short sale. We do it sooner than the other agencies. Um, divorce situations, we've gotten very creative there. Using assets. Um, in a mathematical equation. So someone doesn't want to do the bank statement loan or the asset qualifier, they don't qualify, but we need to use their assets as an adjunct to their current income situation. So just like passive income. Um, we're going to go through buy now, sell later, which is a departing residence clause. Um, but this is a great program. We love to be your hero on this. Something's going wrong and please engage us. Um, so Jay went through that success story. So that client, by the way, had sold their company and was getting a payout over the next four years, but we were already into it two years, three years. So you need continuance on everything for income. We look for three years continuance, a standard guideline for the prime rates. This woman didn't have that. She had she, the payout on uh, payout distributions. Right. Yeah. I mean, cash so we, we took alternative ideas that we felt were risk averse and made a decision and did the deal. And again, rates are, you know, anywhere from, I'd say a half a point to three quarters of a point higher than conforming in most cases. 
foreign national is the last program, so foreign national program. These are people that don't live or work here in the United States. Um, so people that have a way of getting here. So we see this a lot for those of you that are up in New Haven. I think about Yale, right? I think about colleges like in Boston. I remember my college roommate in uh, 1992 in Boston um, was a guy from the Middle East. He was in the dorm for a month and his father bought him a $1.5 million condo. And in 1992, that was a lot of money. Um, a lot of people that are foreign that have kids here in the U.S., do not want them living in dorms for some reason. So that's a big way. Um, people that bought during COVID in New York City. So my success story here is we had a um, we had a loan officer leave our sales rally in Nashville and went back to New York City and said to his realtor, said, hey, listen, I just learned about this program. How many foreign nationals did you have pay cash in the last few years? One realtor got back. He just did a cash out refi of $5 million cash. And now that foreign national is buying two more properties. So he did 10 million worth of loans, 5 million with there, two and a half, two and a half. And then she just got two $5 million deals under agreement for two more rentals. So both people did $10 million to kick off the year. This is real stuff. So when people think they need to pay cash, give them an alternative because you could find other ways for them to get more properties and for you to sell. But we don't verify anything overseas, okay? This is, we qualify on the investment side of the DSCR, or we qualify on their assets, which we affirm. And we don't, someone asked me yesterday, we do not have a closed list of who we do business with. It would be up to the United States to make that decision. So are we most likely not gonna accept a bank account from Russia, possibly? Um, or depending on, you know, the certain banks that we're dealing with, they have to be legally able to bank here in the United States. And again, have to have a visa that's legal to come in. They do not need to be a citizen. And what I was talking about before, we actually do that other deal full doc where people with, that are coming here that have no credit history, no W-2s, no nothing, but they have a contract to work at a company, as long as they're through um, all the due diligence and there's nothing left to be signed off on. Usually they're in the midst of getting a social security number. We have a we have a path for that as well. And we don't verify anything overseas. So we're seeing a lot of people from South America, Europe and Canada right now coming into the US seeking employment. So if you have those scenarios, again, we do them probably 25% down. I know some local banks were doing it with 50 before. So when we talk about exceptions, just want you to take a look here. This is stuff that we do all the time. Hobby farms, anyone got a listing with a little, <laughs> little acreage or a barn, we'll finance those. Um, huge acreage, we see a lot of that in parts of New York and Western Connecticut. Um, but these are all different things we would do. Um, and again, the non mortable condo is huge right now. Oops. Okay. So buy now, sell later. This is, this is great for you. So I was laughing yesterday because there's a town called Milton, Massachusetts, which is one of, it's like a hotbed for bidding wars. There should be a show there. Million dollar listing Milton is what I say all the time, because it's like a house will be listed for two and a half million. There'll be 30 offers and people literally like fight. It's crazy. Um, and the realtors do too. The realtors get pretty, pretty crazy there. But buy now, sell later infuses your current client that says, oh my gosh, if I ever could buy that house on Boston Post Road, I want it. If this, if anything comes up from here to the ocean, I want it. And you as a realtor going, okay, sounds good. Are you ready to go if we find it? So you refer them to a lender. The lender goes, well, you don't qualify for a bridge loan. You do have a ton of equity, but your income, you can't qualify both. With this program, we are able to give you a pre-approval, not contingent on their home sale, but contingent that they meet our departing residence guideline, which is they have to have at least 20% equity in the house that they will list. Dear Jay, I promise in the next 90 days to list my house. We love those letters. Mm -hmm. Just a promise. 
it doesn't happen in 90 days, it doesn't happen in 90 days. But basically, we are taking that letter and we are erasing the current debt to count towards buying the new home. So if you had a current mortgage of 5,000 and your new mortgage in your new place was going to be seven and you couldn't carry $12,000 of mortgage debt, we would basically erase the five on the departing residence because we know where you're going to sell that property and just qualify you and buy the new one. 20% down on the new property. And then there's reserves, which we can use from retirement, et cetera. But it's a really great program to kick start the business, right? You know something's coming on, you know a listing. Reasons why people don't want to sell right away. Marketplace, they want their grass to be green. They want leaves on the trees. They want their plants to come up, right? My house will sell much higher with all these beautiful flowers, right? Um, this is a way to basically prolong that and get the best price for them for their listing. Maybe you want them to do work. By the way, we do allow them to access that equity. We have a home equity line of credit that can close in five days. It's all AI, does everything online. Um, we also have bridge loans that they could get to utilize with this product. It's only, it's the same thing as the equity line. You're only gonna be able to tap between, I think it's like four and $500,000. But usually it gives them a lot of room to kind of make the move and put it over because we're not counting any debt on that departing property. So we get really creative there because our goal is to make sure that between the fast track, this type of program, to make your um, contracts when you're submitting them, as hassle free to that other that listing agent as can be. Okay. Marketing collateral, like I talked about before, we use a company called Total Expert. Any of the loan officers in the room can send you a quick link. You go in, you add your picture. If you want MLS sheets, they're there. But basically, as you get pinged with clients, when we do a birthday, when we do a semi-annual semi loan review, any sort of marketing that we do with someone that you referred us, you will be on there for the life that the client is in our system, okay? It is a great reminder to that client who they worked with before. We are always trying to keep these clients engaged. We also have a significant <laughs> amount of software, like I said before, behind the scenes. We have this dashboard, someone gets their credit run, if someone lists their property, if someone does any of these things, Jay knows. It's great, because then you know, right? So we have a lot of intelligence. If someone's looking at listings as well, we can tell. If someone wants to use one of our calculators and say, got all this credit card debt, I really want to figure out a way to pay it off. They can go in and use our, you know, the credit credit tech consolidator. We have all these different things that we can track and we know. So they go into it. I could say, hey, this person's pretty active. They might be selling. You want to give them a call. Okay. So it's very high intelligence. It's one of the biggest differences between cross country. I think I've seen in other companies, right, Jay, is that the young progressive minds that they brought in, right, with new ideas, right? Um so you know how you say something and all of a sudden Facebook feeds you what you said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when Jay's face pops up after this in your loan officer. So here's some to end this. I just want to go over some of the marketing ideas that we have. So you've just been trained a little bit on investment properties specifically. Um, if you were to post this, do you think anybody would respond to you? Again, you can take pictures of this. this. These are just ideas that you could use, but have someone else pay for your vacation home, kind of like what I want to do. You know, I got trained on financing options and great tools to determine short-term rentals. Are you looking for an investment property? Again, put yourself out there with this information. You have a partner here that can help you do it. Everyone knows what Airbnb is. So this catches the eye. I test marketed this. I had like 15 people call me. I'm not even a real estate agent. We just fed the, fed the leads out. Where are you looking? Oh, here? Great. Here's this person. But these are, again, great, 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 you know, quick little ideas that you could do, you know, at any point in time. And our loan officers can help you as well with that. That's all I got. I appreciate your time. Hopefully some of this information is relevant to creating a for you.
Thank you, Lee. Uh, he did it in Boston yesterday to one of my good friends up there, and uh, he said there weren't many questions answered in public, but everyone flooded me afterwards. <laughs> so does anyone have a question? You're absolutely free to talk to him afterwards, but if, if you have a question, it might help someone else in the room. So I'm going to start in the way back first. Um, regarding like the ESR ones, yep. Uh, any of the ones, yep. I guess that's what our conversation is about for a few months. But I know you're trying to separate them up specifically for the five. Yeah, so generally, if you price with a one year prepay, the rate's actually going to be very close to what Fannie and Freddie offer in today's marketplace. So low to mid sevens, depending on the credit score and down payment. But yeah, we have options all the way from a five year down to a one year prepay. Um, I think, you know, every situation is kind of unique what someone's looking to do. So we try to gauge off the bat what would be the closest range we'd want them to do. Like we've had people that have said, hey, listen, I'm going to go in and do a DSCR and then I'm going to redo a bunch of the house and then I'm going to start renting it again after that. I'm going to do one unit, then do the other unit. So it's probably going to take me a year and then I'll refinance, pull some cash out. So in that case, we do a one year, but we have no prepayment options. Yep. If someone's looking to become an investor and buy a house with a DSCR loan, do they have to have ownership in any properties prior or any landlord experience? Great question. So no on the landlord experience. Um, no on the landlord, but we do want to verify their primary housing payment, right? Because some people try to trick the system and I'm like, oh, you rent in Fairfield and you want to buy an investment property in Fairfield. Probably not going to pass the witness test on that one. But like we just had one where a woman in Boston um, was able to, she lives and works in California and wanted to buy a, a condo in, in Boston and rent it because she was getting a great deal from a friend. So, you know, in those types of scenarios, as long as we know our biggest test is, is the client going to live in that property, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, because that's problem. You can't buy an investment property and call it a primary because the rental income that was otherwise followed by you was really not there, right? So that's the reason for that. I was just gonna ask, can we send out the slides from this? So we're actually going, we're recording this. Oh. We're actually gonna put it up on our YouTube channel and you can share the whole thing. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. What's the uh, max maturity date for the uh, So the max maturity date, meaning when do they have to sell? So. So the new home, we're doing a normal loan. Wait, hold on a second. Buy now, refi later, or oh. uh, buy now, sell later. Sorry. Okay. Um, well, any end mortgage we're doing, right? So the buy now, sell later, we actually do with all those programs, um, except for the investment property because they don't occupy it. Um, so... You know, basically, the max maturity date on the listing, is that what you're saying? No, no. So you have the basically the short term loan, right? That you will receive in the beginning. And then, so how long? Yeah, there's, there's, it's not a short term loan at all. So oh. we're doing, we're doing the loan. So a bridge loan would be a short term loan. And those have a max maturity of what, four months? Six months. Yeah, four to six months usually. But that's on that departing residence that they have to sell that property or lenders get a little squirrely. Um, but on the new home that we are financing, it's just a normal loan. You could do a 30 year fixed right. arm. Correct, you're excluding the debt on the one that you're leaving. Yeah, yeah, we're just omitting the payment. Yep. Uh, um, so on the financial plan of goal, how are you securing the asset and what are restricted on it in the broker? So, I mean, from a brokerage standpoint, as long as, a, you know, like we had talked about before, if it's someone that's invested in like a restaurant, right, or someone that's invested in some other way where we can't get a statement, we're looking for six month statements of those of those assets. There's no lien or anything on any of those assets at all. We're purely qualifying off of assets that you have and the ability to liquidate in the case that you can't make your mortgage payments anymore. And that's it. And how long is the loan? This specifically pertains to you with private banking. We've got a lot of clients that will. You can do a you can do a five year, seven year, ten year note. 
with amortization periods from 30 to 40 years. No capital quality you guys are going to no. Like say they, they, I don't know, puts against NVIDIA and decide to skyrocket and get too close. I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. We're purely looking at the fact that we're going to take X percentage of that asset depending on where it is in our eligibility cycle. So a regular investment, you know, um, like the stock NVIDIA, for instance, mm -hmm. we'd use 80% of that to qualify of the value, today's value. What about that? Bonds, treasuries, same thing, 80 percent. Yep, marketable securities. Yep. So for the private placement. Sorry. No, go ahead. You're good. So You're private good. placement again, yes. it de you it depends it. what it is. So if someone has invested, you know, millions of dollars into something but can't touch it, probably be on an exception based on what the rules and regulations were of liquidation, mm -hmm. kind of like the CD. So remember, I said make sure you talk to financial planners and CPAs. So he's a in the financial planning space. That's why he's asking some complex questions. But I, I wanted to tell you the reason why he brought up Nvidia is because the stock went like this, right? So what he's asking Peter is like, are we going to take order of that because it just went up so quickly? And the answer obviously was no. But just letting you know, like these are the complex situations that can help unlock assets, deals, etc. So I mean, it's so, yeah. so two things. Uh, and Peter answered the question. I got a. Uh, I got to leave while we're in this room. People's minds are are thinking, and I was going to ask what the buy now, uh, sell later is for. It's for everything other than the investment ESPR, property. Yep, yep. Right. Uh, and then the second thing, somebody asked me a question. If I know Peter, uh, and uh, do I work with this guy? And I just wanted to tell you, I mean, it's hard for us to keep all of this straight. He's the best, and we do work with him. We can send him scenarios, and he's going to respond to us and. and either tell us about what we should be thinking about, what questions we need to ask, or what direction we might be able to go with the scenario. Okay. So he, he's a sales guy. He's got a local uh, real estate company as their, one of their in-house contributors, and then kind of transitioned his career, transitioned his career, and now he's the director of this product with the entire company. It lives in Massachusetts, it's pretty helpful. Uh, so he knows our market, the way that speaks the town, and he can help us put some deals together. Um, any other questions? Yes. Does the buy now sell later work with like uh, self employed individuals? Yep. Yep. Every, every loan other than, other than the investor from. Can I just put this Yeah, you're good. Question. If you have a person who does Airbnb, how do you take that into consideration for the rental income? Not both consistent? How do you work? So, what we want from a real estate agent and the loan officers will, you know, coach you up on this is that. You know, when we're working with a real estate agent to buy a property, we're going to use Air DNA with you. Hey, what's the property address? We plug it in. Two seconds later, here's the report. Then we'll also go into like local area and we'll search on VRBO, Airbnb, kind of see what's happening. That's if you don't know the area, right? But like, imagine if you positioned yourself as the Fairfield Beach Airbnb person or that type of thing where you would know the data like hey during the year parents are coming here to visit their kids listen i was going to stay at a hotel last night there wasn't many options that were close and i was afraid of the traffic on 95 so i just got up at 5 a.m instead um but but it's the type of thing where airbnb i started looking around and there's tons of them just for that so hey i want to come visit my kid that's going to rent two to three hundred dollars a night I can look at the water. I can, you know, walk to my kid's house, go see the disgusting stuff that they're doing at the house. And, you know, <laughs> um, I went to a lacrosse house one time down here and it was crazy. Uh, it was a long time ago, but, um, but it's that type of thing where, again, we're gonna use air DNA and we're gonna use local data on the purchase. Now on the refi, we're gonna arm that client, like, hey, here's all the stuff take your information that you have. Because again, folks, a lot of people don't know that they can pull cash out of investment properties to procure new properties. It's one of the hottest things because try to get a home equity line when you own 10 Airbnbs and you're writing off the sun, the moon, and the stars and you're self-employed. It doesn't happen. No. Our rates are much lower than a home equity line, number one. Number two, it's fixed, right? And people are like, oh, I don't want to lose my three and a half percent. Right. Well, if you owe 150 and you need to pull 300, we'll show you what a blended rate would look like on a home equity line or 
pull out here, right? So with us, so when we're looking at those things, it's just, it's cheaper. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, my question was with the um, buy now, sell later, you said three months. What happens if they don't sell their house in three months? Again, we're, I'm not, we're not checking. Oh. Yes, it's all intention based. Oh. Any other questions? Yes, yeah, uh, Peter, uh, two things. Number one, the the mix, the DSCR mix use, use yep. commercial, residential, but five or six units strictly residential, that's acceptable. Five to eight units is coming out mid February. Okay. Up to five right now. We already have two. Is, uh, I do a good amount of this space. They know. Small bit zone, pizza guy, convenience stores, you know, restaurant. If I'm an agent, um, they're calling, they're always calling the agent first. If they're giving you a pre approval letter with Wells Fargo and they're a small business owner guy, chances are most of these guys are writing off everything. Yep. So I would just probably be curious on that when we get there. And then, like, just think of us for the pre approval letter. Yeah. I mean, the, the worst thing you could absolutely do in this marketplace as a real estate agent is waste your time with people that are not pre-approved the right way. A uh, loan officer told a story, Chris told a story yesterday, woman buying a home, million dollar place up in uh, Maine, second home. And the agent said, hey, listen, we're not gonna accept this Wells Fargo. Again, Wells Fargo. Um, a lot of the bigger banks are using AI technology just to automate letters. There's no thinking, no, Chris got into it after 10, 15 minutes. There was no way this person was gonna qualify. They put the place under agreement. Now we're trying to do something on our side. But again, like we want to get to that answer for you very, very quickly. That's so you're not wasting your time. So, you know, always advising a second look. I know a lot of people have private wealth and, uh, advisors down this way, but getting a second look to what they are getting qualified on, actually, if you know somewhat of their background is smart. Again, Jay said soft credit pool. There's no... There's nothing that's going to damage them at all except for their time. So, well, any other questions? Um, so, on the four national program, can you do H1B employees that have uh, two, three year contracts? Yes. Well, good question. Yeah, good question. On the investment, uh, the mortgage, like I'm a little bit about more on the investment side and just for the profit, just a couple of things ago. I mean, it's a six, six units, mix and use. And it was like close to a million dollars. We closed cash, so now we're looking to refi. So yeah, so in, you can have someone start the process now, but the guidelines for that we haven't published yet. There's a due diligence that we have to do with every state we lend in before we go to our five to eight unit um, rollout, and we're just trying to figure that part out, especially too on the appraisal side, because we're going to be doing these, which is great, as residential mortgages. So like a local bank would probably ask you to do an environmental study and you know the costs would skyrocket. You're looking at five to 10,000 just to, in, in fees before you even get started. We're really trying to adjust that down. It's just every state has different legal, legal ramifications that you have to follow. So we're just, the legal review is almost done. So, but yes, we should be able to do that very soon. And do you have any portfolio products that uh, issue repairs in the home instead of doing a renovation on I mean, right now, I think it's only, you know, through our new construction oh. or, or construction product line that we have. Um, nothing, we do not have a bank statement or, you know, asset qualified. We don't have like a limited documentation I'll, scenario. I'll have a full documentation. So we have something like that. Um, Hold on, we repair. Yeah, we do repair loans. Yep. Do yep. 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 Are you lending on the repair? No. What was that? I you're not lending on the repair. Right. We do, though, if you're talking that, we do do holdbacks, though, on almost all the mortgage products except for my line. <laughs> uh, just because I'm still waiting for five years later for some places across the U.S. to still do the work. So we don't do it with this because we securitize these down the road. Mm -hmm. um, but with Fannie, Freddie, some jumbo outlets, we do have holdbacks. So septic, small repairs, that type of stuff. Thank you. Yep. What's the best place to with me? Well, uh, well, 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 well
the loan officer partner, and then you guys can connect with me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, so I'm gonna wrap it up by saying a few things. Um, you know, we talk a lot about self-employed, we talk a lot about self-employed, and a lot of it was how a self-employed borrower can buy a home. But we need listings. How many people do you think are self-employed sitting in their house thinking they can't buy an excess? Yeah. Yeah. Opportunity to unlock some of them, right? So take that intel, not just think about it from the buy side, but also think about it when you're, you know, marketing yourself to sellers and trying to market yourself to sellers. Don't do candidly what everyone does, which is the old school farming tactics. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it, but how to do it, right? Try to find a self-employed person that can't get out of their house because they think they can't get out of their house. They right. really can get out of their house. Um, by show of hands, who's going to reach out to a financial planner or CPA at some point very soon? Yeah. Uh, and then last but not least, condo. So he talked about condo, which is a Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac in the box, not, not the non QM out that box stuff. But we are seeing these challenges every day. So here's what's going on, folks. We talked about the deductible. So we've run into issues lately with a water deductible, which is a policy inside the policy for the master policy that is over 5%. Okay, over 5% doesn't work for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and has always been the rule. Why is this coming up now? Think about all the disasters that, are been, that there have been in condos. So a lot of the HOA insurance companies are not renewing master policies unless A, you pay a lot more money, or B, you take a much higher deductible. What do you think they're doing? Taking a higher deductible for lower costs. So we've had literally three instances, at least I've had three, I think Janine, you had one or two, and I'm sure the other folks in the room have had them too. In the past 30 days, we had two HOAs change their policies because I said to them, guys, listen, you're not going to have just a problem with me. You're going to have a problem with another guy who tried to do a loan here too. So we've gotten successful on that. But the reason why I bring that up and tell you that story is Pete is absolutely 100% right. If you are listing a condo, you're doing yourself a disservice and your client if you don't get the stuff up front. Janine, though, they're putting the praying hands up. Um, if you don't get the stuff before you list the property, I'm telling you, if you get the insurance policy, you send it to us, we'll look at it and we'll tell you if it works or not. Right? It's going to save you a lot of headache down the road. So just, just a little bit of a tip. Get out there. And when and candidly, when you're pitching a listing, if I'm pitching versus Pete and I'm talking about the insurance, I'm going to get ahead of it. I'm not I'm going to help you sell it. Can I do it the right way? And Pete's just saying, hey, we're going to put it out for 420. How's that sound? Who's the more educated, more professional? The one that's going to help them close the deal, right? Mm -hmm. You would think that the one who's advising them on the insurance and everything else is the one doing the listing versus someone who just kind of shows up and puts a number up. So if you need any help with that, we would be absolutely fine looking at the insurance policy for the HOA to sell. Get their master insurance policy from the HOA. Yeah. Yep. Get that to us and we can do the calculation. Yeah. So it's all based upon replacing yeah. value. Yeah. There's other things that we can advise you to do as well, which is just point. So if you're listening to condo, reach out. We'll help you. Especially if you're writing a contingency free offer to win the deal that people are planning on taking a mortgage. That is a must. And if we're a listing, I can't tell you how many people call. They're like, please help. I can't believe I took this listing. I've driven to this house. I've shown it 50 times. Because you know when you look at some listings and it will say like, must be portfolio bank only because they know that there's a problem. <laughs> A lot of people are listing their homes not knowing that there is a very big problem because they didn't pay attention to what's going on with the, you know, their HOA notes. And we're hoping Fannie and Freddie actually have, I am praying, I mean, we, I'm looking at 50 a day, um, or, or my team is. So it's, it's a very delicate issue because a lot of people don't, a lot of agents don't know their listing properties that, you know, I'd say half of them got denied yesterday because the way we're looking at it is there has to be a way to pay that deductible. So like the one, one of them yesterday was a $200,000 condo, 146 units, condo fee is $150. If there was a loss, it was a $2.7 million difference in deductible versus their savings, their reserve amount that they had. So in order to do that, that was like $18,000. Do you think that's affordable for someone? They just lost their whole place. So in order for us to rebuild this place now, we need 18 grand per unit. They just lost their whole home. It's not ever gonna happen. They're not gonna rebuild it. So it's that type of thinking that we're trying to look to see, 
what the deal is, it's a lot of hard conversations with condo associations, but they're trying to keep things affordable because insurance costs have gone up that much. The thing is though, it's, they basically doubled. So everybody was at 5% or lower. Now we're seeing them between eight and 10%, um, which again, doesn't pass that muster. And most local banks will follow Fannie Freddie, right? Around here. So, and the big banks, this is gonna happen at the end of the process. I can tell you that much. So if you can get that information up front or even get it to one of the loan offs, say, hey, take a quick look. They have, we have a whole condo department that will look at it really quick. They love looking at 200 page, you know, deck, uh, insurance decks, you know, and whatever you do, don't drop it off. Only one page. Get it via email, please. Uh, all right, so, so thank you. Why thank you all for being here, but let's give Pete a big round of applause. Any questions, feel free. He's happy to answer any questions yep. after. And uh, thank you for those that did ask. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thank you.